Hi, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Jenny Lassard. I'm a chef and recipe developer based in the Capel Valley of Saskatchewan on Treaty 4 territory and the homeland of the Métis. I'm really excited to be working with one of my absolute favorite Canadian ingredients today. Drum roll, barley. Barley is Canada's fourth largest grain crop and I first started using it when I had a restaurant in a small town called Birch Hills, Saskatchewan and barley was one of the first crops to start ripening and it was so good to see the farmers getting out on their combines again and in celebration of that I always made a barley, lentil and vegetable soup. So I'm going to show you how to do that and I don't want to call it a clean out your fridge soup, but there are lots of ways to use what you have on hand to make this hearty, nourishing and delicious soup. The must have vegetables for this soup are carrots, celery, onions and garlic. I have two large carrots diced, four stalks of celery diced, and then I really love onion, so I have a cup and a half of onion. You may just want to do half an onion. Little tip, if you have kids that think they don't like onions, put these in the food processor, just puree them into an onion pulp and you can hide your onions, but you'll still get that beautiful flavor. I love the way barley combines and marries with the flavors and the textures of lentils. In this recipe, you could use any kind of lentil. You could use green, you could use beluga, football. I like to use split red lentils because they'll break down and give us that nice kind of, almost like a combination of a soup and a stew. We'll call it a stoop. So I have split red lentils. Um, we're going to give it a little bit of zing with something that everyone has in their fridges, pickle juice. So it can be any kind of pickle juice. It could be pickled onions. This is just straight up dill pickle juice. That'll give us a little bit of a tang. And we want to supplement the vegetables in this recipe with whatever you have on hand in the kitchen. You can use leftover roasted veggies. You could use bell pepper. What I have here is just a kind of a lonely potato I found in the pantry sweet potato and then I have some smoked cauliflower that I smoked up in my in my fire pit so that'll add a little bit of a smoky flavor but really you can use any vegetables you like for this just to round out the flavors of the soup and then tomatoes are kind of the the flavor base for this soup. I just use whole tomatoes and kind of mash them in the bowl before I add them to the soup. You could add, use diced tomatoes or frozen fresh tomatoes. Of course, in season, you're going to use them right from the garden or the farmer's market. For seasonings, not too much seasoning. I find that all these beautiful vegetables will kind of speak for themselves, but we're going to add basil, oregano, a little bit of um, chili flakes, a little bit of onion powder, and then I like to add some bay leaf to my soup. Little tip, you want to count the number of bay leaves that go into your dish and take that amount out because they can be a little bit of a choking hazard. Okay, let's start cooking. My pan is nice and hot, so we're going to add our canola oil about two tablespoons or a little more. I think I probably did about three to four tablespoons there. We'll let that heat up, but the pan is quite hot, so it won't take long. We'll start with our onions. And then add our garlic. We're going to reserve a little bit of our garlic for a puffed wild rice and toasted barley topping that's going to go over top of our soup at the end. So keep about a teaspoon of garlic aside. We're just gonna saute up all our veggies, bring out lots of flavor, kind of start to caramelize our onions. I don't use a stock or a broth in this soup, just the tomatoes and water and all the good kind of fond from the veggies. So I have my pan on high right now. Mmm, it's already starting to smell amazing. As soon as you see your garlic starting to brown and your onions become translucent, you can start adding your other veggies. We'll start with our carrots, then our celery. You notice that I've used the celery leaves 
I just love them. They have so much flavor and I reserved some for the topping for our soup, soup too. Our stoop. <laughs> Okay, let's add our mixed bag of veggies. In my case, it's cauliflower, sweet potato, and potato. Add those to the party. And then we'll add our seasonings. I like to add the seasonings to the pan because then they can get a little bit toasty and kind of have a head start on that, that flavor release process our oregano and our dried basil. You could substitute for fresh herbs in the summer. We're going to add a little bit of salt at this point, but I really want to control the sodium levels in my dishes. So I add a little bit of salt at the beginning and then at the end we'll taste and see what we need to do for that. We need to add a little bit more. So that was about a teaspoon total for our whole pot of soup. That'll feed probably 10 people. The one thing I won't add to my <laughs> fry pan is my chili flakes because I did that once and I basically pepper sprayed my whole restaurant and everyone had to step outside for some fresh air. So save your chili flakes to go into the soup pot. Okay. Now our veggies are nice and caramelized. They're starting to get a little bit tender. So we're going to put everything into the soup pot. Mmm, I could just eat this. Let's kind of deglaze our pan with our water just to get all the goodness out. We have eight cups water. Ooh, look at that. There was a little bit of flavor left in that pan for sure. Turn our burner up to medium high. Add all of our water. Our tomatoes. Our split red lentils that we rinsed really well. And of course, our barley. The type of barley I'm using today is pot barley. So you'll notice in stores, you'll see pearl barley and pot barley and maybe wonder what's the difference. The difference is that pearl barley stayed longer in the purler, so to take off the outer husk of the barley. I generally use pot barley because I wanna get absolutely every little bit of fiber that I can. It keeps me feeling full longer and it really adds to the body of my dish. Mmm, so rice cooker, stove top, or in the oven are great ways to cook with barley. So here's what we have now. The barley's gonna expand. The lentils are going to expand and soften. And while we have kind of a watery mixture now, we're going to put a lid on it, set it aside for a bit, and when we open it back up again in about 15, 20 minutes, we'll have a different dish altogether. And don't forget your bay leaves and your red chili flakes. So let's get started on our toasted barley puffed wild rice topping. I'm part of the Indigenous Culinary of Associated Nations and the chefs that belong to that group, we love to promote Indigenous food suppliers and producers. This is wild rice from Northwest Saskatchewan from NWC Wild Rice. I grew up in the North and the wild rice industry was Really, really huge, a great source of employment. And of course, it's a really healthy ingredient that just grows in our natural lakes. It pairs so well with barley. So first we're going to fry up some garlic, a little bit of oil. I like to use a heavy bottomed cast iron pan for this. Mm -hmm. This won't take long at all. The pan's nice and hot. You can see it's already starting to brown up. Okay, done. We're going to take that off the heat 
and transfer it into a bowl. My handle's not super hot yet, so I can just do this. Okay, we'll get all that garlic out. Mm -hmm. It's okay if a little bit stays in, we just don't want it to burn. We're going to add the barley first. So it won't puff like a kernel, but it will get nice and toasty. So we won't do it all at once. We'll just do a little bit of barley and then a little bit of wild rice. I just found out that barley actually lowers cholesterol. Health Canada um, approved that claim. So eating barley every day or making it part of your daily diet can really help your heart health. So I have this on medium high heat. You do not want to walk away. You don't want to, your attention to stray at all from this because once it starts popping, it'll pop and you don't want it to burn. I use this cast iron pan to make bannock in my oven too. And oftentimes I'll substitute part of my flour for barley flour, just for extra fiber and flavor. It gives it kind of a nutty taste. So now you can see the wild rice is curling up and popping. The barley's getting nice and toasted. If you're not using a cast iron pan, you'll probably want to go to medium heat because this really heats up and holds the heat. I didn't add any extra oil. We just used the oil that was left in the pan from frying the garlic. If you're using a non-stick pan, you can do this with no oil at all if you were leaving out the garlic. Okay, I think we're done. So let's get all that barley and wild rice out of our pan and then we'll just season it with salt and pepper. Okay, let's set this aside and check on our soup. Mmm, our soup is smelling so good. Let's take a peek. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Yum, look at that. So the barley is fluffed up. The lentils are soft. Mm. So we're just going to taste it. Take a little bit, you don't wanna burn your mouth. Mm. The salt level is actually great. I'm not gonna add any more salt, but it needs a little zing. So that's where our pickle juice comes in. So we won't add all of it. We'll just add a little bit and then taste. Mmm, I think we could use just a little bit more pickle juice. And then we're going to add a little bit of sweetener just to kind of balance everything out. So this is maple syrup from Wabanaki First Nation in New Brunswick. It's a completely indigenous owned and operated company and I just love using it. And the bottle's so pretty too. Nice, of course, what says Canada more than maple syrup? Maple syrup and barley go incredibly well together. So we're just doing about two teaspoons of maple syrup. If you didn't have maple syrup, you could use honey. That would be fantastic too. Or even a little a bit of birch syrup if it's in season and you have access to that. Mmm. So let's taste again, keeping track of which are the clean and dirty spoons. Mmm. I love it. Just a little bit more pepper. Not the chili flakes, just some traditional ground black pepper. Okay, so we're going to return that to heat. We'll turn our heat back on and just let it thicken up a little bit more, probably about 10 minutes. So the total cook time for this dish, from chopping your veggies to having it done, is just over an hour, so it's fairly quick. It freezes beautifully. You can pull it out and eat it any time of the year, actually, but it's a really nice hearty winter dish. You could keep cooking this a little bit longer if you wanted it thicker, but I'm really hungry, so this is the way it's going to be today. Mmm. <laughs> I think I'm hungry enough for two ladles full. And finally, let's add our toasted barley and puffed wild rice topping. I kind of like the plating that the cool kids are doing now, kind of on half the bowl, so let's try that. Spoiler alert, I'm not one of the cool kids. There we go. And then, let's just add a little bit of our celery leaf. You could add 
you know, chopped green onion, chives, whatever you want, just to kind of give it a pop of green and brighten it up. And here we have our barley, vegetable and lentil soup. Enjoy.